Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are here down with Origin Yachts down in Poole to have a look at this Sasse Marine Oyster 35. Lot of boat, they've packed a lot of boat in here. Let's just have a quick look while we're outside before it starts raining. You can see quite logically fender storage on both sides and also quite nice when the fenders are on the boat you can fold them up so the fender baskets are out of the way. There's an access hatch here for the fore cabin. Dolphin nose anchor and anchor locker, so the anchor hangs over the top, and a diving board if you like at the front. There is also on this particular variant a full set of sun cushions, so you can have this entire sun lounging area at your disposal. And quite, again, really clever design, although it does have side decks on both sides. There is also forward access to the front window. So like on a conventional sports boat, you can fold that window over and gain entry to the fore deck without having to go around the side decks, which is really nice if it's a, you know, it's a bit of a rough day. Full canvas uh, covers here. It comes with a radar arch. And you can see before we head in, you've got a omnidirectional TV aerial there and a little tower there for your nav lights. Really decent sized bathing platform. This is all synthetic teak here, so it's sort of set and forget. You'll also notice there's another double fender basket here and really useful size cleats on both sides. And it's illuminated, which is quite nice. Ladder here to gain access out of the water. So if you've been for a swim and you want to get back out, pretty straightforward. That's nice, actually, look at that. It's on a stay hinge as well. Over the other side here, we have got a, just a general storage bin, really. So somewhere to put your cleaning materials and your hoses and shore power cables and the like. So I can I love that little cleat to tie your dinghy on. Covers are really good. As you can see there down here we have a deck wash or shore uh, swim shower and quite a nice little neat little gate here. So the gate clips back across and gives you access to the cockpit. Really, really voluminous decent sized cockpit here again you can see it's it's teak laid although i think that might be synthetic as well really useful decent size socializing dining area here now as you would imagine this table drops down and you can infill it with cushions so i'll drop in a, a picture of that infill with cushions you can see how much volume and how much height there is in here with this massive canopy. So if I stand here, put my hand up there, I can just about reach the top. So there's tons and tons of headroom. So it's a really nice quality, good quality, decent, recent cover. Engine access is down there. So I'll have a look at that on the way out. As you can see on the starboard side, there's a sort of mini wet bar area. So there's a sink in here is a fridge or fridge box, storage and gas cupboard down below. One small step up, and again, you'll notice that there is little lights in here, which is quite nice. This, for the sake of it actually, just taking a step back, that is engine access for quick and easy checks. But you'll notice there's a line around here, this entire aft cockpit section hinges up hydraulically to give you massive access to both of the engines. But again, we'll have a look at that on our way back out. So it's about to say one little step up, takes you to the sort of helming station on the port side really nice sun lounger with sort of the ability to sit forward or sit backwards depending on what you want to do starboard side is our helm station so very nice stylish sesse seat with a quite a clever little pop-up bolster so the bolster goes up so you can stand to steer or you can fold that down and put your feet on the seat rest Put your feet on the footrest and steer sitting down. You'll also notice down there there's some fuel uh, cutoff switches, Volvo Penta controls, Sesse radio, uh, sorry, Raymarine radio, instrumentation, normal switches. This one, quite a logical, I imagine, has been upgraded to a, a more up to date Raymarine. And then effectively paired engine gauges, so starboard engine, sorry, port engine equipment here starboard engine gauges all over here and then two rev counters and a speedo conventional binnacle compass on this side here we have 
a Raymarine depth repeater, selection of switches, including things like anchor winch, and then this variant has got a bow and a stern thruster, so really straightforward. Push it sideways, there you go. Push both switches sideways, it goes sideways. You can pivot it by pushing one in one direction, one in the opposite. Ignition switches and the leg trim controls for the outdrives. And just for the sake of it down here, there's a controller for the Sony stereo system. We looked at it outside, but here you can now see how you can gain access via these two steps around the grab rail and then through this folding section. So this window unclips and folds over to the port side, giving you really easy access forward, obviously once you've unzipped the canopy cover there. So that is the cockpit, which as I say is incredibly spacious, very sociable, and they've packed a lot in it. It is a pretty wide beam boat, this one. I'll put all the measurements in the details below, but yeah, there's a lot of entertaining space in here. So let's go and have a look down below. So this door slides right the way across, like so. Little catch in there to lock it in when you're at sea. Three steps down, but you can get an idea of the scale and the depth. Get the sun out of the way for a minute. Of this incredibly spacious 34 footer, 35 footer. It's always nice to see a carbon monoxide alarm. Lovely grab rail as you go down. As I say, three steps takes you in to this incredible cabin. So the first thing that greets you really is this dinette here. And again, as you would imagine, that table drops down, there's infill cushions, and that makes up a really nice, decent sized double berth. So I'll drop in some pictures of that. If you head forward, it takes you to this sort of master double berth, really decent size, up on a platform. So there's tons of storage as you would imagine, under the bed, like so. I guess there's probably more storage under here, is there? Yeah, look at that. I can't see that, hang on a sec. Do that again. Big storage locker under there. Nice that there's opening port lights both sides, so really good ventilation. And as you can see, then an emergency hatch and additional ventilation through the skylight. On the port side, decent sized hanging locker. Another bit of storage over there. If I spin around, you can see there's cupboards all behind here. Decent size uh, LCD TV down there. And obviously a stern of the dinette is the galley area, which again is really well appointed. Full size isotherm fridge. Then there's a bit of extra storage under the sink, as it says there with the gas tap. Decent little stainless sink with mixer tap. Again, quite nice that you've got opening port light for ventilation. Combi microwave oven. More storage, that cup looks like it's about to fall out. No, we're good. Storage up there. Loads of every available bit of space has been made into a cupboard. It's really neat. Then here you've got the 12 volt power distribution center. It's all your trip switches for your bits and pieces. And then a black water gauge and a fresh water gauge. And the shore power switch over. Really nice looking Corian work surface. Underneath here, if I just hinge this up a little bit, you can see there's the, was it double? Yeah, double burner gas hob. Lovely Nespresso machine here. And also you'll probably notice this vessel comes with Robasto warm air heating throughout and a really clever use of a stainless splashback just to give a bit of extra space. So that's the dining area and the galley. Over on the port side here, you'll notice there's another door. This is access, sort of Jack and Jill access through to the heads. Starting with an electric flush loo. And I don't know whether this is sort of an Oyster standard feature or this owner's had it added, but there's an electrically powered towel rail. So when you've been out for the day, your towels are wet, your swimming costumes are wet, you can hang them all on here. As long as you're on shore power, you can plug it in. If I've got that completely wrong, let me know in the comments. Obviously electric flush loo, storage under the sink, like so. And again, really nice, they haven't hidden away the pipe work. So many manufacturers will hide that pipe work away. So if you need to change anything or access it, it's really good that you can access it across there. Another Corian style worktop. Big mirrors in here. Cleverly conceal additional storage. And then you'll notice down there is a drain away for the shower. And then there's a full 
conventional full-size shower there with a shower curtain that swings around to keep the water off the loo and that's the other door for Jack and Jill access if you open that door it'll take us through to the aft cabin which we'll go and have a look at in a moment but I just wanted to mention one other thing that I forgot to mention when we were out here you probably notice there's a big curtain up here so this curtain swings right the way around on this track which then effectively means that you can completely close off that forward berth giving you privacy from the forward berth through to the converted dinette and I think I've got a picture which I'll just show you what that looks like with the curtain across. Okay, so obviously that's the heads in there. So in here we have the aft cabin. So let's go and have a look at the aft cabin. Again, okay, just over here, this is such a light and bright boat. Obviously, it's I think it's 2005, but the woodwork and the lightness and the just general feeling of Italianness if there's such a word, Italian flair, is everywhere on this boat. Doors are just really solid and really lovely. So anyway, into the aft cabin. So the first thing we're greeted with is decent size, full height wardrobe. With a bit of extra storage on top. You can then see this door is the Jack and Jill door that takes you through into the shared bathroom. So effectively, that's one door, that's the other door. One step in gives you full headroom, standing headroom, which is nice. And then there's like a lobby area. So there's a couple of steps in, bit of storage there, mirror over the side here, little sofa, which I suspect has storage underneath, opening port light. And even if you sit on this sofa, sitting down, you've still got great headroom. That gives you access to this pretty vast, I would say, for a 35 foot boat, pretty decent size, double bed. Again, Opening port light on the far side, another 30 odd, 32, 33, 35 inch TV, let me know what you think. Um, and a proper, proper mattress, and again I suspect there's storage underneath here. But just big, big, there's a lot of room on this boat. And it's in exceptional condition, as I mentioned here you can see the vent there for the air heating system. There's also another vent for the Wabasto air conditioning, not air conditioning, Wabasto heating system in the loo. So there you go. So let's go and have a look at the engines. A couple of steps back up here. Takes us back into this palatial cockpit. As I mentioned, this is the engine axis down here. So lift this up. So here you go, down here we have the engine bay. Nice, decent amount of storage. There's the hydraulic ram that lifts the whole, that whole half cockpit section up. And down here we have a pair of Volvo Penta CAD 43 engines, giving this boat a top speed of probably around the 35 knots and a cruise probably in the mid 20s, the 24, 25 knots. So decent turn of speed. As mentioned with the uh, stern and bow thruster as well, that's going to give you a really, really nice level of handling. So there you go. That is a Sesso Oyster 35. Hope you've enjoyed the tour. Please like and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you next time around. Thanks for watching.